On a Thursday in August, I got out of work and we headed down the parkway all the way to the end into Cape May. Now, if you live in New Jersey, a lot of people refer to where they live by their exit on the parkway, and we were going all the way down to where the parkway ends, which is known as Exit Zero. We were making just a quick overnight stop at the Depot Travel Park, which is an RV park in Cape May. It's situated right in the middle of everything, close to the beaches, and most importantly for us, it was less than 15 minutes from the Cape May Lewis Ferry. Hi, sir. How you doing, sir? Good. Yeah. yeah. Just want to pull off from the stones here, and that next brown building up there is the office. I'll check you Oh, cool. There. Okay. We had an early appointment to get on the ferry and head from Cape May down into Delaware and then make the drive down to Assateague National Seashore. We were very excited about this trip, mostly because it was so difficult for us to get reservations. I tried multiple times and it really was challenging because they sell out almost as quickly as they are released over six months ahead. So this is a trip that we've been looking forward to for quite a while. We were at site 108, toward the back, away from some of the bigger rigs. It's a nice little site. The campground was almost full to capacity, but it was still pretty quiet. I actually like those spots. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, we're not by all the giant rigs, yeah, which like is it. nice. Yeah, the bathroom's right there. Yeah. We get settled in pretty quickly, so now there's just a little bit of light left. We're gonna go walk around and check the place out because we have to leave pretty quickly in the morning to go get the ferry. The only sound we could hear around the campground were air conditioners. It was a very hot weekend. It's a neat old airstream. Mm -hmm. The campground has a mixture of full-timers and travelers, and it's very clean and well-maintained, so we would definitely stay here again, especially because the location is so great for downtown Cape May. And the bathrooms. We checked out the bathrooms and showers before going to bed, and although they're not the most modern, everything worked well and the showers were hot and they had good water pressure, so that's always nice. The next morning we had everything ready to go so we could head from the RV park to the Cape May Lewis Ferry Terminal. It was less than a 15 minute drive right on the other side of the canal so that made it very convenient for us to head over there because you do have to get to the ferry early so that they can organize you in the staging area. Hi ma'am. Good morning. Seven? Thank you so much. You too. Once you're in line, somebody will come over and check your RV or check your car. But especially when you have an RV, they want to make sure that your propane is shut off before you get on the ship. Hi, sir. Good, good. Yes, sir. Yep. We've taken the Cape May Lewis Ferry several times. But this was our first time taking the scamp on the ferry. You can take RVs of all sorts of shapes and sizes onto the ferry, which is so neat. And the ferry itself is such a pleasant ride, especially in the summer when the weather is nice. You can go up on the deck, you can walk around, you can get something to eat or drink. It's really better than driving. Did they chop the wheels or anything? No. No, no they would do it. If yeah. They needed to, yeah. yeah. Just put the parking brake on. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Scans was on a ship. It's weird. Mm -hmm. It's weird that you can just drive onto it, but kind of neat though, and saves us a lot of a lot of driving time instead of going all the way around. A lot yeah. of driving time. So once we're all off of this and going to Assateague, it's only like 50 some minutes to an hour to get to Assateague mm -hmm. in the campground. So it's all well together, it. less than two hours of driving. And this always sets off a, a nice trip. You always feel like you're doing something, getting yeah. on the ferry and going over. Especially because last time we did this, it was dark. So <laughs> this is not, and, and it was cold. It was yeah. dark, it was cold. And then COVID was like at its peak. So and we had to like kind of stay in the car. Mm -hmm, they wanted you to stay in the car. So now we can actually like kind of enjoy it. Mm. Move around, so. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go check it out. It was a perfect day to head up onto the deck and watch the process of the crew getting everything ready to leave Cape May and to keep an eye out for dolphins as we made the crossing Go over to toward Delaware. One of the neat things about the ferry is that it's dog friendly. So there were a lot of dogs walking around on the deck and Red got to go on the ferry last year when we did our trip for New Year's, but it was kind of cold and Red's not a fan of being cold, so he stayed in the car. They lifted the boarding platform that allows the vehicles to drive onto the ferry, and then we were all set to go. Scamp is on the water. We're moving. We're moving. <laughs> so cool. watched those beautiful Cape May beaches go by and we spent some time just soaking up the beautiful morning sun. It really is nice to take the ferry early in the morning. But we were starting to get hungry because we left camp pretty quickly that morning and we hadn't eaten anything. But good thing we had our entire RV on the ship with us so we headed down to the lower deck. We have not eaten breakfast yet, so we're gonna eat breakfast in here while we're on the water, which is just like the coolest thing to me. I don't Thank know. You. I don't know why I'm so excited about that. We're floating. It's so weird. Now you have to keep your propane turned off. You can't do any cooking or anything like that. We just had some cereal and milk, but it was nice to be able to eat and relax in our own space. And it was still strange to me that we were in the scamp in a ferry on the water. The trip takes about an hour and a half and before you know it you look out and you can see Delaware on the other side so we got ready to get off of the ferry. The ferry lands in historic Lewis, Delaware which is a great destination in itself. There's actually a state park right across the street and a lot of people come down here on the ferry just to go shopping and to walk around in Lewis or to go to the local outlets. But we had about an hour drive south 
and over toward the shore to get to Assateague National Seashore. But it's really a very pleasant drive because you get to go through some of the farm country in Delaware. It was a bit tricky navigating downtown Lewis with the scamp, a couple quick turns that were definitely challenging, but once we got through that part it was a good drive on some back roads and then we came to the bridge that brings you over onto Assateague Island. Now we were excited for this trip because this was Patrick's first time at Assateague and it's such a unique experience because we've camped a lot of places but here you are so close to the beach and there are wild horses, which is just an experience that you don't get at very many places. We checked in at the ranger station and then headed to our campsite. There are two main camping areas in the National Seashore. One is the ocean side and the other is the bay side. Now, since it was so hard for me to get reservations at all during the summer, we ended up settling for the bay side. I really wanted to try the ocean side, but those are the hardest sites to get. So we were in Bayside Loop A. We are Loop A, so we're the first loop. And we are Site 11, over in the middle. Bayside Loop A 11. I found it interesting that online it says all the campsites are booked and at the ranger station it says the campgrounds are full. But for most of the time that we were at the campground, it was maybe about half or a little bit more than half full. There were open campsites every single night that we were there. So I think a lot of people book sites and then end up not coming. Maybe because the weather can be rather challenging as we were going to find out on this trip. We came over to the bathrooms to fill up the water because, of course, National Park, so no hookups at the campsite. But uh, we'll have water and we'll put our solar panel out so we'll have some electric. The first challenge was it was very hot and there is no shade anywhere in the campground. That's neat. Didn't take very long. No, that's, well, we saw horses right when we got in. Mm -hmm. We're at the campsite. I think our battery will be charged. Yeah, I think we're good on solar. Thank goodness. Because that fan's going to be going yeah. 24 hours a day. It was in the mid 90s with not a cloud in the sky and a very strong sun. So it was extremely hot and you could see the horses were standing by the bathroom waiting for a little bit of water because they were pretty hot too. We don't have air conditioning in our scamp and up until this trip I never really missed having air conditioning but this was the one day that I kind of thought hmm it would be nice if we could cool off a little bit right now. It's the baby. <laughs> As we were getting the scamp set up, a couple of horses with this adorable baby horse walked over into our campsite. Oh, he's so shaggy. You actually have to be kind of careful before you walk out of your trailer or your tent because you never know when the horses are going to come around. Although the horses have lost their fear of people and obviously they will walk right into your campsite with no problems. You have to be very careful because they are still wild horses. They are not domesticated in any way. They will definitely kick, bite, and try to steal your food if you leave it unattended. So you have to keep a very safe distance. We tried to work around the horses as best we could while we finished setting up the scamp and trying to get settled in our campsite, but they really seemed to like our grass.
We're surrounded. Hey horses, we want to wanna make dinner. There are several groups of horses that roam around the island freely. And this particular group really liked a loop. So we got to see them several times throughout our stay at Assateague, which was great because we loved watching this little foal. He was so funny. It'd be funny if you were having a fire and they came up at night. Mm-hmm. I, I bet you they like sneak up on people okay. sometimes. This one walked around the corner and scared the heck out of me. All right, see you later. We just ate dinner and uh, we're both feeling pretty tired. It felt like it was probably the hottest day of the year to me. The car said it was 97. When we got here, it was like the hottest part of the day. It was pretty much like one o'clock when we checked in, got to the campsite, started setting everything up. And the last thing we were gonna do was put the awning out on the front of the scamp because it was like full sun there's no shade at the campsites because there's just like little shrubby bushes and stuff not really trees and we spent I don't know 45 minutes to an hour searching the scamp for the suction cups that we used to attach the awning to the sides and we could not find it and by then we were both like sweating and tired and hot so we ended up putting the chairs behind the scamp where it was just like a little a little bit of shade like we were just like leaning against this camp to get shade and it was so hot it just like wiped us out so we didn't do anything today we went into town to get popsicles and <laughs> some cold drinks for tomorrow because it's going to be hot again tomorrow but um i think if we get down to the beach you know at a reasonable time we will actually do stuff tomorrow it was just bad timing because it was just so hot but um, it might rain in a little bit, so it's actually beautiful right now. A little bit of a breeze. Mm. There's some clouds coming in. The sun is starting to go down, so it actually feels really nice. I think it'll be good to sleep as long as we have the fan going. Oh, look at all the birds. Got an onshore breeze. It's nice. The bugs aren't bad either. Yeah, it'll I'm kill. shocked. It'll knock them down if it's coming off the ocean. For the first two nights of our stay at Assateague National Seashore, the campsite directly across from us was empty and the campsite on the other side was empty, which is nice because you don't get much privacy. The sun is going down now and we're trying to sit outside because it is much nicer out now. It's really cooled off, but we're using all of our bug management tricks. We've got thermosel. We have the mosquito incense sticks. We have the bug zapper. <laughs> and I sprayed our chairs with bug spray. We just took a shower so I don't want to put bug spray on us. And it's, it's, you know, I guess it's manageable. We'll see. I'll give it a couple minutes. <laughs> see how well our system works. As it got dark, the first of several thunderstorms rolled in, which is a common occurrence on the barrier island. You can get some very severe thunderstorms, especially when it's this hot. And we thought we were doing pretty well with our bug management, but we were about to experience one of the worst nights of sleep we've ever had in the scamp and something that neither one of us have ever experienced. Last night was not our favorite night of sleep, and this is what we have done. This is what we have resorted to in the camper 
to try to keep the bugs away from us and I'm sad to say it's still not working. We'll see how it goes tonight. I'm going to try a couple different things, but um, this is the bug net that we brought. The original plan was that we were going to set up the awning outside and put the bug net underneath it so we could sit outside in the evening and we wouldn't get attacked by mosquitoes. The problem is, is not the mosquitoes, although there are some mosquitoes for sure, it's actually the noceums, the little tiny, tiny bugs. They can go right through the mesh on our bug net and right through the mesh on our windows. So it's really, really hot right now. We kind of have a, a decision of if we close the windows, we're going to sweat to death. Um, but with the windows open, the noceums just go right through and come in and they were biting us like crazy last night. So I don't know. Hopefully we can figure out a new plan. Okay, now we are going to the beach. It's still pretty hot today, so it seems like the best plan of action. And it's supposed to thunder later, so we want to get it in before the thunderstorms. The last time I camped here was probably oh, at least 10 years ago, maybe more. And at that point, they didn't have these special picnic tables, which I think is such a clever idea. The problem was last time the horses figured out how to open people's coolers and they would like flip the lid off and eat everything inside. And they would just be like throwing stuff all over the place, eating bread and all sorts of stuff that's really bad for them. So they created these little storage areas underneath the picnic tables that you can actually slide an entire cooler into but the horses can't open them so you can store your food in there which is very clever and it's just right underneath the picnic table so this time I haven't seen any horses getting into anything so hopefully people are like figuring out how to be smarter about their food storage because it does create a kind of a dangerous situation where the, the horses start associating people with food and they are wild horses, so they'll kick and bite and all that kind of stuff. They're not friendly and domesticated, so it's important that uh, they don't get too close to the people. Although, they don't have any fear of people. They'll walk right up to you. You have to be careful. <laughs> they don't sneak up on you. Since we forgot to bring the proper pieces to set up our awning, we ended up sitting under the tailgate of the Jeep to get a little bit of protection from the harsh sun. But we sat there for a while and watched the thunderstorm clouds building in the distance because we knew that there was a storm coming. Just a little while later, the storm clouds opened up and it started to pour. I looked outside and I saw two of the horses standing in the road, just letting the rain come down on them. They stood there motionless until it stopped raining and then they started to walk down the road and they just looked like they were so relieved that they got a little break from the hot sun and the bugs. A few minutes later we looked out and saw the other herd members coming down the street. The mother and the foal that we were watching yesterday were heading the lineup and the other horses were following behind. It's so funny to see them just walking down the street very casually. It's funny how they just walk down the street. Yeah. <laughs> we got just a little bit of a break in between storms 
and luckily our solar panel was doing a very good job of keeping our batteries charged. The bugs were starting to come out so we headed back into the scamp and got a little bit of protection from the screens. Shortly after, the next part of the storm rolled through and this one was even more severe. The wind was pushing everything around, we could feel the scamp rocking and the rain was very heavy. It's like rocking the scamp. <laughs> it's good to not be in a tent. We got another small break in the storm, but just like the last one, this one was not going to last very long. We were going to try to go down to the beach if it stopped thundering, which it did not. It's still actually a lot of lightning. So instead we're making cookies. That was a good trade-off. And we have cookies. This weather though, yeah. this is no joke. <laughs> it is pouring again and the people in the campsite right next to us are already leaving because their tent was leaking and it's just like constant thunder and lightning for what, like two hours now? Yeah. It's been going and going. So, I really feel for the people in tents because yeah. this is rough. Alright, we're going to eat cookies. The next morning we woke up to mostly cloudy skies, but the sun was starting to break through and some of the blue sky was starting to show. Since it rained so much last night, it cooled it off and we were able to sleep with most of our windows closed. This helped significantly so that the little noceums had fewer entry points to get into the camper. They were still in there, but it wasn't quite as bad as the previous night. I took a little walk around the campground when it was still quiet and I went over to the bay side. Some of the campsites are right along the bay. This was one of the ones that was open and it gives you these great views but what I figured out is that the closer you get to the water the worse the bugs are and I got attacked by 20-30 mosquitoes. So I headed back into the scamp for safety. getting ready to remake the bed because it was getting really disheveled and I just wanted to show you the process because a couple people have asked about our bed setup and we're actually about to change it so I want to show it to you now so you can see the difference okay so these are the scamp cushions which are extremely firm which is why we're gonna change it and we don't ever change this back into the dinette this can actually be a dinette with like seats on either side we're never gonna do that so we want this to permanently be a bed. Here's our bed extension, that piece of wood that slides out. You can see that in some of our other videos. But since we're getting ready to go do stuff, I put the bed extension away. I took all the sheets off because we had to shake them out. And these are two mattress toppers. That's how firm the scamp bedding is. We have two very nice soft memory foam mattress toppers. The problem is they don't fit perfectly and they tend to slide around like when you're moving at night they will tend to bunch up and kind of move so every couple days I have to fully strip the bed and just put it back together which is one of the problems that we're going to hopefully try to solve by switching out for an actual mattress um, but now I'm going to put the flat sheet and the mattress protector on here and then um, kind of make it hopefully look nice there's really no special secret to the way that I make the bed. It's really just taking everything and like tucking it around the corners and 
using the sides of the scamp mattress to hold the sheet in place because I think a fitted sheet really doesn't fit the bed super well so it's just a flat sheet that you like tuck in nice and tight around the corners and you're always going to have to redo it. I think maybe that's what people are looking for like a way for the bed to like stay together better but I haven't figured that out yet. I can make it look nice by tucking everything in but it's still it still just needs a reset every couple days. mattress protector on. I haven't started sweating yet, so that's a good thing. Now the flat sheet. And there's the flat sheet tucked in really tight into the corners. That's the key. You have to like really shove all the extra material into the corners so that it holds it tight. That also helps to hold our mattress protector in place and our uh, pillow tops. Even though it was super hot on this trip, we were trying to sleep with this blanket because it gave a little bit of protection from those new seams. I would try to hide under the blanket as much as I could because it made it harder for them to get at your skin and bite you. But of course it was a trade-off of trying not to overheat while you were sleeping. But thanks to all the rain, it was a better temperature at night for us to get some sleep. And there's the blue blanket, which I think is a queen. The fitted sheet I believe is maybe a full, and this blue blanket is a queen. So there's a lot of extra fabric, which I just shove as much as I can into the corners to hold it tight. I'm gonna throw the pillows on there and then it's all set. Okay, so much better <laughs> organized, clean, and in the winter when we have an extra blanket, I'll just fold it and put it across the front here. I put our little organizers back onto the sides, our pillows, the wedges, and then there's Pat's organizer. And this is about the time when we're camping with Redford that he jumps on the bed and starts rearranging pillows and blankets, but <laughs> since Red's not with us, it'll actually stay nice and organized until we get back. All right, I think the plan now is to go explore some of the walking trails that show just the different environments around the island. So we were actually surprised. We knew that you could have dogs here if you're camping. You just have to keep them on a six foot leash like everywhere. They are not allowed on the part of the beach where the lifeguards are, but you can take them on other sections because we did see dogs yesterday. So we're a little bummed that we didn't bring Redford, but I think all in all, it just would have been too hot for him. Especially that first day we got here. It was, it was too hot for us, so he definitely would not have been enjoying that. The other really neat thing that you can do here is actually have a campfire on the beach as long as it's below the high tide line, which is pretty special. I feel like there's not a ton of places where you can have a campfire on the beach. The other thing we notice is the, oh my God, look at that spider. Oh, he's huge. You have to see this spider. Oh my gosh. Is that poisonous? I don't know, but he doesn't look friendly going to say that. It's neat though that they have a severe weather shelter for the bathrooms because we were trying to figure out why the showers are huge and they have just benches along the sides and I think that's why. Like if your tent gets ripped open in a thunderstorm like we had last night, what are you going to do? I mean you go in your car but if there's really like serious weather you would have to go uh, in the showers. So that's what the showers look like. There's no light in ours which is funny. We have to bring our lamp in there, and it's cold water showers, which actually, I you'll probably never hear me say this again, but it actually felt really good, <laughs> especially yesterday. It was so hot, but uh, if we were camping here, maybe in the fall, which we were talking about doing, I think we would probably just shower in the scamp, which would be fine, because, you know, cold showers in the, in the cold weather is not my thing. One of the signs on the bathroom reminded people not to give the horses water, especially around the bathrooms because they can start to become aggressive in guarding that resource. We went down to the Life of the Dunes Trail. It's a little bit more overcast today, which is actually kind of nice. Um, 
and it's only 77 degrees instead of 97 like the other day that was that was hot we're trying to be extra careful with the sun because I'm okay we were trying to be extra careful yesterday I thought we were being extra careful keep, keep going straight yeah keep going straight uh, life of the forest trail we'll come back to that okay. we're gonna go all the way to the end to the okay. over sand vehicle area over sand. yeah that's the other hiking trail oh. when we went to the beach yesterday like we know we're pale we don't do well in the sun we burn really easily so we were like putting on sunscreen putting on sunscreen I had my giant hat on for like m pretty much the whole time I was at the beach I had my shirt on for most of it I took it off for just a little while and we still got burnt like good so <laughs> we're trying to stay a lot more covered up right now and I think one of the things that I'm gonna rethink for the next trip that we do like this is getting um, clothing that's just better at protecting you from the sun without making you feel super hot and sweaty if that's possible because we just we just don't do well in the sun no matter what we just have to stay covered especially if uh, we want to be able to sleep at all without being covered in sunburn the first trail that we were going to explore was at the very end of Bayberry Drive oh it's those holes again oh my gosh when we ran that over with the scamp I thought it was gonna break This is one of the areas that dogs are prohibited, so we were glad we didn't have Redford with us, but we were gonna check out some of the ecology that's so unique to this island. Each of the three hiking trails at Assateague highlights a different ecosystem on the barrier island. The Life of the Dunes trail shows how the dune grass and other plants are so important at holding the sand in place to form a protective barrier. Hmm. There's a road. Oh, the seagulls like to drop clams on it to break them open. Wow. They almost developed the island. Really? Yeah. They had cleared it for 130 side streets off of here. <laughs> so it would have been just like Ocean City or any other place. If you've ever been to a typical shore town, they cram the houses into every square inch of free space. And that overbuilding tends to erase any experience of the natural setting that that barrier island had. And that makes Assateague a really special place. Now, even though it's very special, it still has its strong challenges. Pretty neat. Yeah. I like the shade in the pine. There are many places where you can go to a boardwalk or beachfront shops and stores and see condos perched on the beach. But there are so few places where you can see the natural state that a barrier island exists in. The farther we went into the dune trail, the more we met the local inhabitants. Oh my gosh. This is a cool tree, can't stop, gotta keep moving. Too many bugs, keep moving, keep moving. Very cool tree, okay. Back to the car. Good thing the trails are short and we were able to make a quick exit and head over to the beach. Now, when you're walking around Assateague, you never know when you're gonna see a horse. And as we took the boardwalk onto the beach, there was a horse just sitting there, enjoying itself. And then we looked over at the dunes and there was another horse. This horse clearly did not see the sign about the importance of protecting the dune grass. Every year there are approximately 60 foals that are born on Assateague Island. So to prevent the herd from getting too large, every July a group known as the Saltwater Cowboys 
bring some of the horses across to Chincoteague Island where they are auctioned off. The proceeds from that go to support the local volunteer fire department as well as paying for veterinary care for the horses throughout the year. Since we found ourselves on the beach again, you know Patrick couldn't resist jumping in the water and going for a swim and doing a little body surfing. Yeah, so 110 just for the day? Uh, I guess. Whoa. That's pricey. That's pricey. <laughs> Must be a good revenue generator for the park. Yeah, that's season. Hopefully. It... Hopefully there's a season pass. Yeah, season yeah. pass. If you're here for like a week. Oh, look at that. I don't suppose you're on the beach. Yeah. It's a neat concept, but yeah. I feel like it would be rough. At night time, that would be really cool. At night, it would be awesome. We headed back down Bayberry Ave, and this time we were going to the Life of the Forest Trail. This is another short trail highlighting one of the special ecosystems on the Barrier Island. And this time we were prepared with the bug spray. The trail starts in the forest and then brings you out onto a long boardwalk which is a great platform to look for all sorts of different birds and wildlife. The egrets. Yeah. Another one of the interesting challenges of being on a barrier island is the constant wind and it can be pretty strong at times, so you have to watch your hat. There were a lot of hats and things that were underneath the walkway that had obviously been blown over. We followed the walkway back into the forest so that we could drive to the next of the three hiking trails, and that's the Life of the Marsh Trail. This is the one that is the closest to our camp spot. You could actually walk here from a loop very easily. Ticks. Ticks. <laughs> is that a spider web? Yeah. Ooh. It's like a thing, like a thing of twine. Because they're so big. It looks like fishing line. Fishing line, yeah. The Life of the Marsh Trail is a big circular raised walkway, which is another spot that's great for watching wildlife. We saw this egret and some crabs and fish, all sorts of things in the marsh. When you go all the way to the end of the loop, we found a little stairway that went down to a secret spot on the bay. There's this little walkway that comes out to this beach area and there were hardly any people there. It was such a nice inviting spot. We knew exactly what we wanted to do for the rest of the afternoon. There's a shoe there. Yeah. We went back over to the scamp to have some lunch and get all the things that we needed to go back to the bay for the afternoon. And we found ourselves surrounded by the horses again. And it was interesting to see that the people are not the only ones that are bothered by the bugs on Assateague. The poor horses, you can see that the mosquitoes and the flies don't leave them alone either. He's itchy. Uh -huh. We enjoyed our lunch with a view of some horses outside at our campsite, but then the horses started to continue along down the road to see what was going on at the next camping loop, and we gathered our things to go back to the life of the marsh trail over to our secret little beach on the bay. 
the secret spot. It's not really secret, but yeah, not so much. just not not really written on the map. No. The bay had some very interesting wildlife. I saw a crab walking toward Patrick, and then he spotted these small jellyfish that were floating all around us. They were a little bit hard to see, and it was tricky to catch it on the camera, but they have iridescent lines going down them. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. If you look really closely, you can see the light catching the iridescence in the jellyfish. At first we were a little bit scared that maybe they were stinging jellyfish, but they were totally fine and they were so pretty to look at. We enjoyed spending time on the bay side. The water is so calm and warm and there's a lot of wildlife around. I watched this group of ducks walk around for a while. I saw some tiny fish swimming around in the shallows, and then I spotted this horseshoe crab just walking around looking for a meal. It was nice to spend some time on the bay side of the island. It's a bit quieter over there, the water is calmer, and you get to see all of these animals that make their home in the marsh. We watched this egret for a while, looking around for some dinner, but we had one more plan for the day. It was the first night that we were at Assateague Island that it wasn't thundering. So we wanted to go down to the beach and enjoy a nice sunset. After experiencing several severe storms on Assateague Island, we finally had an evening where the weather was very cooperative. We headed down to the beach because we wanted to take this opportunity of nice weather to enjoy a sunset because there's really nothing like a sunset on the beach, especially when you're in a national seashore where everything around you is in its natural state. You don't have crowds of people or condos. and You really get to experience the wildlife and the natural setting the way that it was meant to be. This sunset did not disappoint. It was full of colors that were reflected by the water. And as the sky got dark, we saw some people gathering on the beach to do one of the other unique things about Assateague, and that's having a campfire on the beach. As the sunset faded, we made our way back to the scamp because we had some interesting plans for dinner that night. Pat, watch out. Horses. Oh my gosh. The bugs are crazy. We went to the beach to watch the sunset, which was great, figuring we'd come back and do a later dinner and shower after. And 
we literally were running from the camper to the bathrooms over here because the bugs were like swarming you. It's crazy how many mosquitoes are out there. Like you can't, I, I was running. You can't stop. You can't move slowly because they will just, they'll cover you. So do everything you need to do before the sun goes down. Don't wait. I don't know how people are outside right now. I think most people are like in little screened enclosures, but some people just have tents and I don't know how they're doing it because the bugs are really bad tonight. All right. So I'm going to try to make a pizza for the first time in the Omni oven. Pretty excited. The Omnia oven has quickly become one of my favorite things in the RV because it really opens up the possibilities when it comes to cooking and it's very fun to play around with. This pizza took a little bit longer than I thought but it came out tasting great. The next morning it was time to pack up to head home. I spent some time cleaning up the dishes and we took inventory of how significant our sunburn was and then we started to get ready to go. We're getting the scamp all packed up. Pat's actually hooking up right now so we can get ready to go. We have to be out at 11 so we have about an hour but I forgot to show you one of the new things I got last time which are these reusable paper towels which are so neat. They have snaps on them so they actually attach to each other and they fit around the regular roll of the paper towel holder. And then I already unsnapped this one. You can just kind of pull them off. They have terry cloth on the other side and clean things. Now, when we're getting ready to go, one of the things that I do is just gather everything up that is gonna get washed as soon as we get home. All of the dish towels and stuff. And then also, since we hang up a lot of our clothes, especially stuff that we're going to rewear because you change clothes so many times a day when you're camping to regulate temperature. We just hang our kind of worn but not dirty yet clothes up there. So I just gather everything up and then we have our laundry bag in here and it makes it easy because I throw everything in. I throw everything in this big red laundry sack that we call the Santa bag and then when we get home it's really easy we just grab that bring it inside and start the laundry process immediately because <laughs> with our small washer dryer at home it really takes a little while to do a few loads of laundry so it's usually the first thing we do when we get home. Once the scamp was all packed up we headed to the next loop where the dump station was to empty the tanks and get everything ready to get on the road. Now before we left Assateague, there was one more place that we wanted to stop, and that was the visitor center. When we came in a few days ago, we were anxious to get to our site and get set up, so we didn't take the time to stop at the visitor center on the way in, which is usually the, the good order to do things in. <laughs> There are so many things to do in this area. We could have easily spent another week here. You can bring your bikes. There's lots of trails that you can ride your bike on. You can go kayaking in the bay, which is great because the bay is very large and most of it's very shallow. You can go backpacking down the island or kayak camping down the island, which is something that we really hope to do in the future. Of course that has its challenges because you've already seen the bugs, the weather, and the sun can be quite challenging in this area, but I think if we can find a good weather window it'll be an amazing trip one day. We were lucky we got the only open RV spot because there's a lot of RV spots. All of these are RV spots but they're all full of cars. I don't think people realize that you're not supposed to park there, but we made it work. All right. Visitor Center. I'm glad we took the time to stop at the Visitor Center before leaving and it really is good to do this on your way in because it helps you to understand what you're seeing around you so much better during your stay. We learned that Assateague Island has always 
struggled with severe weather from wind to hurricanes. They had a life-saving station that was known for rescuing people from shipwrecks in the area. It was thanks to some of that severe weather that the island was never developed because there were several attempts. Here you can see they divided the island up into thousands of lots that they were going to build houses on. My favorite thing that I learned from the visitor center was that barrier islands are constantly changing shape. Here you can see from 1882 to 2005, the end of the island was completely reshaped by storms. There was also a lot of information about how to conduct yourself around the horses. It's so important to give them distance. This is an app where you can actually identify the horses that you find around the island. And then a really important reminder to safely store your food because as they say, a fed horse is a dead horse. I found out that the horseshoe crab I was watching in the bay it's actually not closely related to crabs, but instead to ticks and spiders, two of my least favorite things. And I'm very glad that we did not come across another one of these wolf spiders because we've had quite enough of them over the past year. Even the visitor center had a reminder for how very harsh the ocean front landscape is, especially in an undeveloped area. It is very unforgiving. Here are two things that we find in the beach at New Jersey as well, the coquina clams and the mole crabs, which are a lot of fun to look for. It's definitely worth a stop in the visitor center. They did a great job on the exhibits. We had originally booked a ferry for 145 to go from Lewis back to Cape May. And I got a phone call a couple days ago that they had to switch the ferry to 245. So we had some time to kill before we head up to the ferry because checkout here is at 11 and takes what, an hour and 15 minutes from here yeah. to get up there. So visitor center was a good little stop to uh, kill some time and learned a couple things. Pretty neat, yeah. neat visitor center, but uh, now time to head to the ferry. But I think the most important take home from this whole trip, and I already kind of knew this, but I feel like it, it like solidified the idea that barrier islands are really harsh, like really, really harsh. The sun, the wind, the thunderstorms, the bugs, like it was no joke. Wind chill if it's cold. If it, yeah, we were actually saying we'd like to come back in the winter with a different rig and experience what it's like here when it's cold. But I could see if you're a new camper or somebody who maybe hasn't camped at the beach before, this could really, really uh, be super uncomfortable. And I mean, we we still got like pretty ridiculous sunburn and bug bites and stuff when we were expecting it. But this is really somewhere where you have to be super prepared for the harsh environment. But when you are prepared, you get like the benefit of just that pristine beach that doesn't have like high rises and stuff all over it, which is nowadays a very unusual, unique experience. So worth all of the discomfort of dealing with the the challenges at the barrier island but I think there's still a few things that we didn't get to do I'd like to have a fire on the beach that, yeah we want to come back like the fire on the beach we didn't get to stop at the life-saving station which looked really neat and um, going down to Chincoteague and the the NASA launch pad and museum that they have there would be really neat to check out mm -hmm. and just kayaking checking out the bay because it's so unique but um, we'll save that for our next trip here we made our way back up to Lewis, Delaware, where the ferry terminal is going to take us from Delaware back to Cape May, New Jersey, and then we are going to head back to the tiny house. Thank you so much for joining us on this trip. Even with all of the highs and lows of acetique, we just loved this long weekend. We feel like we fit so much experience into just a couple of days. And isn't that what an adventure is about? There's always going to be those highs and lows that leave you with some good stories at the end. So we're really looking forward to finding time to do another trip to this area so we can experience some of the other great things that it has to offer. Thanks so much for coming along with us on this trip. Make sure that you are subscribed. 
If you enjoyed the video, we would appreciate a thumbs up and we hope that you will join us for our future travels. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be. The news and watch hear your career. It's time for you to face those fears, and it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there. So don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten, you begin to focus again. And no time flies. We have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us.